lot of residents living near the scene of a chemicals fire in Dumfries are complaining of sore throats, runny eyes and itchy skins. The blaze in a former RAF hangar used to store chemicals by the Gate Rubber Company left a huge cloud of smoke over the town. It led to several hundred families being evacuated from their homes in the Heath Hall area. Many of them are now suffering after effects despite assurances that the fire was not a health hazard. Local MP Sir Hector Munro says although he's concerned about what happened, he won't be raising the matter in the Commons. However, he'll have talks later today with the Scottish office and officials from Gates. Sir Hector spoke to us just before he set off to London this morning. First, I was very concerned as to what happened and met constituents on uh, Saturday and we'll be putting all the points to local authorities and to the Scottish office and to Gates Rubber. But I think the police inquiry and the fire investigation will prove what chemicals were involved. But fortunately at this stage uh, the health people were quite happy they were non-toxic. Sir Hector Munro there. Environmental health officials have been taking samples of drinking water, milk, grass, fruit and vegetables and testing the atmosphere in the area around the fire. People living in the immediate area should not eat leafed vegetables such as lettuce and fruits such as strawberries until the results of all the tests are known. More information is expected to emerge this afternoon when Gate Rubber Company will hold their first press conference since the fire. A 23-year-old Maryport man has been jailed for life for the brutal murder of an elderly widow in the bedroom of her home. Ryan McKenna of Churchill Place, Maryport, admitted carrying out the frenzied attack with a hammer. The victim was a distant relative of McKenna's, 79-year-old Sarah Lambert of Wallace Lane, Maryport. The High Court in Carlisle heard how McKenna hit her over the head 14 times after breaking into a cottage to steal money. A court has been told how an Egremont man was slashed to death in a frenzied attack by a jealous husband. Plasterer Robert Connors, aged 30, was attacked with a combat knife as he slept in an armchair after a night out with mother of three, Mrs Elizabeth Quayle, who'd split up from her husband a month earlier. Mrs Quayle's husband, David, denies murdering Mr Connors at Stoke and Trent last June. The trial at Stafford Crown Court continues. Murder squad detectives hunting the killer of a borders woman have appealed for more help from the public. They believe a heavy blunt object was used to kill Mrs June Turner at her home in Lindbourne Street, Gallashields. Police want anyone who's found such an object to get in touch. In addition, they say the murderer probably had blood-stained clothing. The Isle of Man Government Tourism Department is blamed today for the failure of the ill-fated scheme to build a replica of HMS Bounty. It had been planned to celebrate the Manx connection with the mutiny 200 years ago. Tinwald's Committee of Public Accounts says Chief Minister Miles Walker must look into the errors, omissions and disregard for established guidelines and decide whether disciplinary action is needed. The £500,000 ship was to be funded by government money and private sponsorship, but the scheme collapsed when two sponsors pulled out and £108,000 of government money had been spent. The investigation continues today into the death of a Dumfries man following a four-hour siege in the town. Jim Douglas, a 26-year-old part-time barman, shot and killed himself after being surrounded by police marksmen in residential gardens in the West Lorinau area. It happened after he'd argued with his girlfriend in the early hours of yesterday morning. Police are now trying to establish how he came to be in possession of a shotgun. A 17-year-old North Wales youth is expected to appear in court at Douglas later today after an incident on board a training vessel off the Isle of Man last night. He was arrested by police after other members of the crew were threatened with a knife. A fell walker has died after collapsing on a footpath in the Lake District. Keswick Mountain Rescue Team were called to the footpath between Calf Pike and Little Dodd on Hell Vellon. An RAF helicopter took the man to Keswick, but he was dead on arrival. An inquest will be held today on a boy pupil found dead in his bed at Sedba School in South Cumbria. He's been named as 16-year-old James Sager, who comes from the York area. A prisoner has escaped from the Isle of Man's prison, where a new £2 million high security extension opened this morning. 26-year-old Patrick Connor from Merseyside escaped over the new 20-foot high security fence on Saturday. He'd been on remand, charged with deception, theft and possessing an offensive weapon. It's the second escape in two weeks. 
the first prisoner to get out was recaptured after five days. An auction of paintings by prominent Lake District artists has raised nearly £4,000 for the Cumbria Wildlife Trust. A number of well-known local artists contributed paintings to the exhibition and auction at Rusland Hall in South Lakeland. The Trust will use the money towards the cost of managing its 40 nature reserves in Cumbria. And finally, the young Dumfries racing driver Alan McNish has completed a hat-trick of race wins in the British Formula 3 Championships. He stormed to victory in the eighth round of the series at Donington Park, leading from start to finish. The victory takes him to within four points of the championship leader. Meanwhile, 18-year-old David Coulthard from Twynholm, Kirkubrishire, has matched up his 13th win in 16 races in the Formula Ford 1600 category. His latest victory at Penbury in Wales extends his lead even further in the championship. That's the news this lunchtime from all of us on the news desk. Good afternoon.